1999, there were 6 billion people living on Earth, and by 2011 or 2012, the population will reach 7 billion. Why is the world population increasing so fast? And what will happen in the future? Every second, on average, four babies are born. Every second, on average, two people die. Every second, on average, the world population increases by two people. Two more people per second means 200,000 more people per day and 75 million more people per year. In other words, the world population, 6.5 billion in 2005, is growing by 1.2% each year. At this 1.2% annual growth rate, the population doubles every 60 years. If the number of people on Earth carried on increasing at this speed, the 6.5 billion in 2005 would become 13 billion in 2065, 26 billion in 2125, and so on. But the population does not grow at the same speed indefinitely. On the contrary, the United Nations predict that the world population will level off at around 9 billion people before the end of the century. Throughout most of human history, the number of people on Earth could be counted in just hundreds of thousands or in millions, and the population increased very slowly. 2,000 years ago, there were around 250 million people in the world, and by the end of the 18th century, the total had reached 1 billion. At around that time, the population started growing much faster. From 1 billion in 1800, it rose to 2 billion in 1927, 3 billion in 1960, 4 billion in 1974, 5 billion in 1987, and 6 billion in 1999. We should reach 7 billion by around 2011 or 2012, and growth will not stop there. So what will happen next? The United Nations are forecasting that the world population will level off at a mere 9 billion by around 2050. How did they reach this figure? And looking back in history, why did the population grow so slowly up to the 18th century? Why did it start rising so fast from then on? Throughout the history of humankind, until very recently that is, the numbers of births and deaths were about equal. Lots of children were born, six per woman on average, but most died in infancy. On average, only two children in each family survived to adulthood and replaced their parents. Because the numbers of births and deaths were balanced, the human population remained stable over the long term. Growth was very slow, no more than a few percent per century. At local level, Populations were often decimated by crises such as epidemics or famines. But once life returned to normal, the population rose back to its former level within a few generations. Around two centuries ago, following a long period of population stability, with practically equal numbers of births and deaths, the pattern started changing. Up to the 18th century, the population was stable or increased very slowly. There were many births and likewise many deaths. Economic development in the 18th century, along with progress in hygiene and medicine, brought an end to the mortality crises due to epidemics and famine in Western Europe and North America. Families were still large and the birth rate remained high, but deaths became less frequent and the population grew rapidly. Fewer children now died in infancy, and adults realized that fewer offspring were needed to maintain the family line. To limit the burden of raising large families, couples started to control their fertility, and the number of children per woman decreased. As the demographic transition progressed, the death rate bottomed out at a new low level, and the birth rate followed suit. Today in Europe, families are small, 
just below two children on average, and practically all children reach adulthood and replace their parents in the next generation. By the end of the 20th century, the number of births and deaths in Europe had practically evened out, and the population stopped increasing. The demographic transition was complete. The demographic transition in Europe lasted for two centuries. The fact that mortality had already fallen to a low level before birth rates started declining led to a temporary imbalance, resulting in rapid population growth during the transition period. In just 200 years, the population of Europe was multiplied by four. The demographic transition, which began in Europe and North America, is now affecting the entire planet. Mortality has declined everywhere and is still falling, and couples are choosing to limit their family size, as did the Europeans and Americans in the past. What about the other regions of the world? The demographic transition should be completed everywhere within the next 50 years. By that time, the Earth will have around 9 billion inhabitants, though the number of people should level off from then on. In other words, over the three centuries of demographic transition, the world population has increased tenfold. And what will happen in the future? Will a new balance be found? We don't know as yet. If mortality remains low, there is no guarantee that the average number of children per woman will stabilise at exactly two, the number needed to ensure long-term equilibrium. What is the long-term outlook for the world population? It is very likely that the world population will increase from 6.5 billion in 2005 to 9 billion by 2050. But what will happen after that? The long-term projections are uncertain. A lot will depend on future family size. In the demographic transition model, fertility stabilizes at replacement level, two children per woman, when mortality is low. The United Nations have imagined a scenario in which future families each have exactly two children on average in which case the world population would level off after reaching 9 billion. But in many countries where the demographic transition is complete, average fertility is well below two children per woman. For example, it was 1.5 in the 25 countries of the European Union in 2005 and 1.3 in Japan. If very small families became a worldwide model over the long term, the world population would peak at 9 billion, then start declining until human beings eventually died out altogether. Fertility may also start increasing again in the countries where it is currently very low, stabilizing at 2.3 children worldwide. This would result in continuous growth up to 37 billion in 2300 and here again the ultimate disappearance of the human race this time due to overpopulation. Under the so-called constant fertility scenario, in which fertility remains at its current level for the next three centuries, 
the population would reach 134,000 billion in the year 2300. But this scenario is unrealistic, since fertility is decreasing throughout the world. It simply shows us how continuous growth leads to explosion within a very short time. These catastrophic scenarios, resulting in the extinction of the human race through implosion or explosion, are not the only alternatives. We need to imagine a return to equilibrium over the long term. The medium scenario is based on assumptions that achieve a long-term balance, such as fertility of exactly two children per woman, for example. It is no more realistic than the high or low scenarios, but simply shows what path needs to be followed if we want to survive beyond the next few centuries. Humankind is starting to control its population growth. But to ensure a decent standard of living for 9 billion people, we will need to manage the planet's resources more efficiently and share them more equitably. Over the long term, the survival of the human race depends as much, if not more, upon our way of life as upon our number.